Hello my beautiful superheroes! Welcome back to my channel, the place where we make the impossible possible. If you're new here, hi! I'm Scarlett Grace, I'm a manifestation coach and I help people break through their limitations and manifest their heart's desires. In this video, we are going to talk about why chasing a specific person or chasing relationships or love doesn't get you the results you want when you're using manifesting techniques. I'm going to explain why this happens and how to actually fix it so that the techniques you use get you results in your love life, get you the happiness that you deserve, the proposal, the relationship, the specific person, whatever it is that your heart desires in your love life. But before we jump into this, if you want to learn how to manifest any desire fast with the law of assumption and Neville Goddard's teachings, then start now by hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you won't miss any video that could change your life. I also have several self-study courses to help you manifest, including a 21-day course on how to manifest your specific person. And if you need some extra help or my personal advice for your situation, coaching is now open. You can find the links for all of those things in the description below. Alright, so let's talk about why chasing somebody, chasing a specific person or relationships in general, doesn't get you the results you want. First of all, if you know a few things about manifesting, then you probably already know that in order to manifest something in your physical reality, you need to become the version of you that has that thing. What do I mean by this? If you're single and you want to be in a happy, loving relationship, you need to assume on the inside the identity of you as a loving girlfriend or as a loving husband or as a loving wife, whatever it is that you want to manifest. So you have to feel that this result is already yours and ask yourself, how would I be different if this result was already mine? How would my thoughts be different during the day? Would I have the same fears and insecurities that I have now that I'm single? The answer is no. For example, if right now you're worrying that you're going to end up alone, if you were in a happy, loving relationship, this is not the thought that would cross your mind. This is not the fear that you would have. You would be a different person if you already had your end result on the inside than you are right now. So in order to manifest something, we have to assume the state of having that thing. So this is basically a change in identity, how you see yourself, how you identify compared to the rest of the world around you. So here's what happens when you're chasing love or when you're chasing a specific person. The identity you have doesn't match the end result that you want because if you were in that loving relationship, would you be chasing a person? If you had your ideal relationship right now, if you had found the one and you were happy together, would you have any need to chase love? to chase relationships, to chase anything in your love life? No, because you would already have that. So when you're chasing somebody or when you're chasing love or relationships in general, when you're chasing anything, that just affirms that you don't have it, that you're not the person who has it. And not just that you don't have it now. It often comes with the identity of I'm not good enough to have it. And that's why I have to try extra hard. If this is what you're doing, that means that your whole identity is rooted in I'm not actually the one for this person. I am not good enough for this person. I need to change myself to match what this person would find attractive, what this person would prefer, so that I can finally have my desire. And this is why either you're not getting results from the manifestation techniques you're using, or when you get results, they're short-lived because they clash with your identity. You cannot sustain them in your reality because your identity says, no, 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 no. I cannot be in a relationship with this person unless I become first the kind of person they would prefer. So let's say that you have a fear that because you have a few extra pounds and this person is super hot and super popular, why would they go out with you? So you use manifestation techniques to manifest this person asking you out or imagine that you are in a relationship with this person. You're doing everything perfectly. This person asks you out. You go out a couple of times. The person starts ghosting you. So you cannot sustain the results that you manifested. And the reason that you cannot sustain the results is because you have this belief that, hey, unless I become uh, very attractive, which includes losing the few extra pounds I have and changing my hair or whatever, I cannot be in a relationship with this person. So when you get the results, you cannot sustain them because your mind says, no, that cannot be. 
I'm not good enough to be with this person. I have to become good enough first. So hold on reality. Don't actually manifest the full relationship for me. Let me adjust and become what this person wants first. Because he could not possibly choose me the way I am right now. She cannot possibly choose me the way I am right now. Let me chase the person. Let me obsess over the person because I'm not good enough now. That's what manifests in physical reality. So now that you know what the problem is, let's talk about how to fix it. The first step to fix this problem is to remember that you are God of your reality. You are the star of your own movie. You are at the center of everything. So when you're doing the chasing, you actually take yourself off to the side and decide that somebody else is the star of your movie, whether that's a specific person or a number of guys or girls that you want to date that could potentially be the one for you. You put those people at the center of your reality. You make them the star of your own movie. And if you make other people the stars of your own movie, you cannot manifest because you're essentially saying, I'm not God, you are God, and my job is to try to impress you, to chase you, to prove something to you. This is not how it works. This is not how reality works. You're the God of your reality. Everything around you, and I mean everything around you, all the people, the things, the situations, all of those things are orchestrated by your own mind. They are your own creation. So you have to remember that you are God of your reality always. You're God of your reality when you look good. You're God of your reality when you're all sweaty and leaving the gym. You're God of your reality when you're healthy. You're God of your reality when you have the flu. You're God of your reality when you get fired. You're God of your reality when you get hired. No matter what happens, you are still the star of this movie. Always. It doesn't matter if circumstances are good or bad. Circumstances don't matter because they are all orchestrated by you, by your thoughts and your imagination. And this is something that you need to remember. You need to remind yourself during the day. So your first task to start shifting things so that you can get the manifestation that you want is to make sure that you spend the day remembering that you're God of your reality. So See it as an affirmation. I'm God of my reality. I'm the only one who calls the shots. Use that as an affirmation. No matter what happens, you wake up in the morning, you look at yourself in the mirror and you affirm, I am God of my reality. I call the shots. And this reality is created to bend over backwards to please me, to manifest physically the things that I decide I want. That's how things work. You affirm that. So during the day, if you catch yourself being upset with anything, whether it has to do with your love life or with something else, you don't go into this uh, train of thought where everything is terrible and you're powerless and you don't know how to deal with this and this is bound to fail or whatever thoughts you would be having. You catch yourself doing that and you say, stop. Why are you thinking this? You're God of your reality. You call the shots here. It doesn't matter what happened. This negative situation just manifested because of your old thoughts. You're God of your reality, remember that, and everything is always going to work out for you. If something else happens, good or bad, if it's good, you remind yourself, hey, I manifested that. Even if it was not a conscious manifestation, if it manifested in your reality and it's good, that means you manifest good things for yourself. You say, hey, look at this awesome thing that happened to me today. I manifested that, and guess what? I didn't even have to make an effort because I didn't manifest it consciously. I'm that powerful. So something else happens. If it's bad, again, you stop yourself from going down the train of thought of how everything is terrible and you're powerless and oh my God, what I'm going to do. And you remind yourself that, hey, I'm God of my reality. If I don't like this, it's not a big deal. I can just change it. Keep doing that every day, multiple times a day, whenever you have the opportunity so that you stay awake. Neville called this the state when we forget that we're gods of our reality and become victims to circumstances, he called this being asleep. So when you don't remember that you are God of your reality, that everything manifests based on your thoughts and you feel like a victim of circumstances, this is like falling asleep. When we fall asleep at night, we forget that we have a different life somewhere else. We get caught up in whatever the scenario of the dream is. It's the same thing with physical reality. It's like a dream, just a very persistent one. So no matter what happens, if you stay awake, if you remember that I'm God of my reality, no matter the circumstances, you keep your power 
And you can change things very fast because you know what happens doesn't matter. You know you can change it. The second step is to actually love yourself and feel that you are an awesome, attractive person exactly the way you are right now. See, here's the thing. If you have thoughts like, I cannot manifest being with this specific person unless I change this about myself or this other thing about myself. Or this person will not want to go out with me because they tend to choose uh, partners that look like this and I don't look even close to that, so why would they choose me? All those things come from the perspective of I'm not God of my reality and somebody else has power over my reality. And because this person usually chooses partners that look different than I look, That means that this person has the ability not to choose me. But everybody in your reality is you pushed out. The only reason somebody would find you not attractive or not good enough is if you yourself think that you're not attractive or not good enough. That's the only reason somebody would reject you. That's the only reason somebody would not see you as attractive. That's the only reason somebody wouldn't see you as a catch, as the perfect partner for them. If you don't see yourself as an awesome person, who of course anybody would want to be with, you are going to manifest people rejecting you. You're going to manifest people judging you. And it's usually about the things that you don't love about yourself. If you're God of your reality though, it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter if you went to college or not. If you want to be with somebody, you can be with that person. And that person is going to see you as an awesome person and would thank the universe or God or whatever every single day for having an awesome partner like you. So in order to stop chasing relationships or chasing a specific person and actually manifest what you want in your love life, you have to see yourself as very lovable, very attractive, awesome, a catch, a person that anybody would be crazy not to choose to be with. To put it simply, if deep down you think that if you were the other person, you wouldn't choose you, then the other person is not going to choose you. Not because there's anything wrong with you, because you manifest this. You wouldn't pick you, so you manifest a reality where the person you want wouldn't pick you. So the second step is love yourself exactly the way you are right now. Now this doesn't mean that you don't have the right to manifest something different about the things that you don't like about yourself. This doesn't mean that if you want to lose weight, because that would make you happy, that you don't have the right to lose weight, for example, or if you have acne and you want to heal the acne, that you don't have the right to heal the acne. You can do that, but if you decide to do that, do that because that would make you happy, not because you hate yourself because of it, not because you feel that unless you change that thing, unless you change your body weight, your hair, your job, your income, your acne, whatever, that you're not worthy. You can love something about yourself and change it anyway. So If you're overweight, you can love your body exactly the way it is right now and believe that you're super attractive and super sexy exactly the way you are right now. And if you lose the weight, you can still love yourself and think that you're sexy and attractive the way you will be when you lose the weight. You don't have to find something negative and distractive in order to decide to change it. So if your hair used to be black, Maybe you loved your black hair and you just got bored of it and you decided you want to become a blonde and you look great as a blonde and you look great with black hair. So it doesn't have to be, oh, I hate this and I need to change it so that I can become better in order to manifest something different. You see the difference? So you can love yourself right now exactly the way you are and feel that you're 100% attractive the way you are. You just want to try being not overweight or being... Uh, without acne, or maybe you want to put on weight. Because here's the thing, loving yourself and feeling that you are attractive, that you are a catch, and any person would be super likely to be dating you or to be in a relationship with you, it doesn't have to do with physical circumstances. It doesn't have to do with the way you look. It doesn't have to do with anything like that. It doesn't have to do with physical reality. It only has to do with your thoughts and your feelings about yourself and your life. It's just a decision. You can just decide that what I'm seeing in the mirror right now, all of it is attractive. All of it is something people go crazy for. It's just a decision. Maybe up until now, you didn't feel attractive enough. You can just decide that, hey, exactly the way I am right now, this is super attractive. 
People love this, especially the people I'm into, they adore this. And I know that most people, when, when I say this, they think it is crazy and how can they decide that this is attractive if we live in a society where something that is a physical trait of you is considered very unattractive right now. But hey, remember step number one, this is your reality. You call the shots, you are the star, you decide the rules. You can decide that all the people I'm attracted to from now on happen to be people who have a type and I am their type. So it doesn't matter what society currently thinks is beautiful and sexy and attractive. I keep meeting, for example, guys who are exactly my type and are perfect for me. And they so happen to love this, what I am, my body weight, a face like mine. By doing those two things, you are ready for step number three. This is a very important step. And usually people cannot pull it off unless they have actually worked on the first two steps. Step number three is a radical change in how you approach relationships in your mind. So here's what most people do who do not get the results they want in their love lives. Most people try to impress the other person. So whether that is a new person that you want to be with, an ex that you want back, it doesn't matter who it is. If you approach this relationship from the perspective of, I have to prove to this person that I'm worthy, that I am beautiful, that I am important, that I am better than other girls, I'm better than other men, in order for this person to see me as valuable and choose me. And this is a problem. The reason this is a problem is because manifesting works based on your expectations, your beliefs and your feelings. So if you feel that you have to try hard to prove that you're good enough, you're worthy, you're beautiful, you're amazing to another person so that they can hopefully choose you over everybody else, what is your actual expectation and what is your actual belief about yourself? When you believe that you're actually worthy and beautiful and amazing and any person would be super lucky to have you in their lives, you don't try to prove this. You're just yourself and you're confident that other people see that and recognize all that value that you have immediately. You don't have to actually come up with a plan so that they can see that you have value. You don't have to do anything to prove that you're actually better than other girls or better than other men so that your specific person can choose you. You don't have to prove it because you know that you are that thing. So what I need you to do is I need you to reverse this way of thinking. You don't have to prove anything. That doesn't mean that you go around treating people badly or whatever. It means be confident in yourself that you are all those things and that other people recognize them in you without you having to chase them and come up with a plan to show them all those traits that you have or convince them that you have them, convince them that you're beautiful, convince them that you're a good person, convince them that you're worthy. This is not how it works. When you're valuable, you know your value, you're confident that other people recognize that value. If they don't, they are the fools. But here's the thing, we're talking about manifesting here. The whole world around you manifests based on what you believe. So if you believe that you're valuable and everybody can see that and you don't have to make an effort to prove that to them, this is what you're going to manifest. You're going to manifest all the people around you treating you as if you're very valuable and precious and important and beautiful because that is what you believe about yourself. They are the ones chasing you. You don't have to do the chasing because you know your worth and when you know your worth, everybody knows your worth and everybody treats you the way you want to be treated as valuable and important and somebody who is worthy of all the good things in life. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon because I put out new videos every Sunday to help you manifest an amazing life.